In this video, we're going to learn about the maximum flow minimum cut theorem, and we're also going to complete an example. Now, when we first talk about this theorem, it seems quite bizarre to people because we talk about something called a cut and a cut capacity. So before I go into explaining what these two things are, let's talk about the example that we're going to solve first. So we have example two here. Now, this example is exactly the same as example one, which we solved in the previous video. So we already know that the maximum traffic flow from A to G is 600 cars per hour. But we're going to solve this using a different method. And the method we're going to use is called the maximum flow minimum cut theorem. Now the maximum flow minimum cut theorem involves two steps. Firstly, we need to make what is called a cut. And then afterwards, we need to calculate the cut capacity. Now on any network flow diagram, you're going to have what is called a source and a sink. Basically, the source is your starting point and the sink is your finish point. Imagine this network diagram shows pipes. Okay, the source would be where the water starts. You could call it maybe the pump and the sink is where the water ends up, which makes sense. Usually water ends up in the sink. Now, the first thing you need to do when using the maximum flow minimum cut theorem is to make what is called a cut. And a cut is an imaginary line that would completely cut off the source from the sink. So looking at our diagram here on the left, notice that our cut, which is our dotted line here, completely separates the source from the sink. If I was to cut along this line, the water would not be able to flow from the source through to the sink because of the cut that I made. Now, looking at the diagram on the right, we have attempted to make a cut here, but this cut does not separate the source from the sink. Notice that my water can still flow to the sink without meeting the cut. So this dotted line on the right is not a cut because it does not separate the source from the sink. The next thing we're going to look at is what is called the cut capacity. And in order to talk about this, we actually need to get right into our example now. Now, as I mentioned before, this is the same example that we did in example one. And you might remember that we already calculated the maximum traffic flow to be 600 cars per hour and we're going to resolve this question the difference being that is that we're going to use a different method we're using the maximum flow minimum cut theorem so first of all question a says draw two cuts one with a cut capacity of 700 and one with a cut capacity of 1300 so i'm going to show you what cut capacity is here. So I'm going to do my cuts in red. So here is a cut which has a cut capacity of 700. First of all, a cut needs to completely separate the source from the sink. There is no way that cars can flow from A to G without passing through this cut. So this is a good cut that I've made. Now, why does this cut have a capacity of 700? And, and some of you might have worked it out already. And you'll notice that it passes through two edges, one with a weight of 300 and one with a weight of 400. 400 plus 300 gives us a cut capacity of 700. All right, question A also wants us to make a cut with a cut capacity of 1,300. 
So I'm going to make a cut this time in blue and I want to pass it through three edges that add up to 1,300. 600 plus 400 makes 1,000 plus 300 makes 1,300. So this cut has a cut capacity of 1,300. Now it's important to look at dot point two, which says that the cut capacity is the sum of the weight of all the edges that the cut passes, which is exactly what I just said before. We add up the weight of each edge that the cut passes through. Now there is a clause, I guess you could say, in brackets, which says we only count edges that flow from the source to the sink. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back to our diagrams where we had the cut on the left. Whenever you make a cut, it kind of splits our network flow diagram into two parts. On the left side of my cut, and I'll, I'll just highlight this, this would represent the side which has my source. Okay, So the source, which I'll label in red, is on the left side of this cut. And we've got to be careful with those words left and right, because it's not always left and right. On the other side of the cut, or in this case the right side, remembering that it's not always going to be left and right. Sometimes you make cuts and you get more of a top and a bottom side of a cut. Uh, so on the right side in this case, we have the half that has the sink. Okay, so it splits it into a side which has the source and another side which has the sink. So it mentioned that we only count edges that flow from the source to the sink. This particular cut passes through one, two, three, four, five edges. Now one of these edges does not flow from the source to the sink. I, I wonder if you can work it out. So we've got this edge here going in this direction. This one flows from the yellow side, the source side, to the sink side. We've got another edge here. And looking at the arrow, it flows from the source to the sink, from the yellow side to the orange side. So which edge doesn't flow from the source to the sink? And some of you might have noticed that this edge here flows from the sink to the source. Okay, so this is an edge that we wouldn't count. And we're not going to see that until example three in the next video. Anyway, let's go back to our example and we're going to do question B. Question B says draw a cut that gives the smallest cut capacity possible for this directed graph. What cut capacity did you get? So usually when you try and solve these problems you draw lots of cuts. You find the cut capacity for each cut and you're looking for the cut with the smallest cut capacity. All right, so um, I'm going to do one in green. So I could do a cut here, and this would add up to 800. 500 plus 300 is 800. Okay, so, so far my cut of 700 is the smallest one that I've got. Actually, I can see I can make one smaller than that. I can cut pass through the 200 and the 400. 400 plus 200 is 600. And I'll tell you right now that 600 is going to be the smallest cut capacity possible. So we'll write that down as our answer to B. 600. And I'm going to write it as cars per hour because this network diagram represents traffic flow. Now what's so special about this number here, this 600? And some of you might have noticed that that's the maximum traffic flow that we calculated in example one, 600 cars per hour. 
isn't it interesting that our maximum traffic flow matches our smallest cut capacity? So that brings us to question C, what relationship do you notice between the maximum traffic flow and the smallest cut capacity? And the relationship we see is that they are the same. And that is why this is called the maximum flow minimum cut theorem. When you find the minimum cut, which in this case was 600, then you have found the maximum flow for the network diagram. In this case, 600 cars per hour. And that is why this theorem is really useful by simply drawing lines that cut our network diagram in two that separate the source from the sink, we can find the maximum flow for a diagram. Anyway, that concludes our video on the maximum flow minimum cut theorem. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.